Aborigines and other land rights supporters were forced to Travelling to London by Singapore on board flight SQ-22. All passengers, please proceed to gate lounge 3. Final call for passengers on flight SQ-22 for London by Singapore. <laughs> I reckon they'll go well, as long as they work hard at it, they'll do it. Oh, we work hard at it, so I guess we deserve it. Yeah, I reckon they deserve it, they do deserve it. I think, I think something, something's got to happen, you know, because we tried every week that we could, 
and sends the right one to us. So it's a pity that you've got to leave your own country to make it somewhere else. But I think that's part of the business. Can't work here to try it over there. Well, you're bound to do well. I think didgeridoo playing is going to bring a lot of people in. And I think the English are going to be really impressed when they see Aboriginals actually playing a didgeridoo because they've never really, oh, they've seen them, but they've never, I don't think they've ever seen the didgeridoo play with rock music, so I personally reckon they'll go well. I think the, it depends on how they take them, it depends on how the English understand the politics. If they take it as, I mean, if, if they don't you, take it as a... If you um, say it properly, they don't understand Yeah, if you it. say it properly, but it depends on how they actually take it. You know? what, do you, what do you think about the politics of it all? Oh, well, that's, that's what I'm growing up with, you know. So I just say natural things, you know. If they don't believe in natural ways, well, then there's something wrong with them. They're not natural. <laughs> right, because a lot of your songs criticise the British, aren't they? No, I just criticise how we've been brought up, you know. Like, it's just that uh, it talks about we're here and this is what we used to have and this is what we still want. You know? and it's only three things, but they're basic things. They're the whole thing of life, you know. Sun, land, water. Do you think they'll understand that? Um, well, I was told they haven't got much land there, so I tried to explain the you know, difference, you know, between land, like, like my, my people and their people, and try to show them what, what, what what's happened, you know, just to show them what's happened, instead of um, going out there and saying, condemn them straight away. It's a better way to show them, to, then you get people to understand a bit more. And that's how I'll go about it. I won't go and criticise just like that. What sort of day is it today for you? Oh, it's a very exciting day for us. It's uh, one of the biggest you know, days in our lives. It's real for us to come out here to the airport and see the sun's on. How does the Aboriginal community feel about it? Oh, they're all excited Ooh. about it. They all feel well. They wish the boys good luck and health and wealth and success. As a mother, I feel very, you know, emotional about this. As you were saying before, um, saying the song's political, well, I mean, they're only trying to express the feelings of the Aboriginal people, you know, and, and their land, our land and that, you know. This is what it's all about. And a lot of pe people think that it's political, but it's not. It's, it's they're singing about the land, you know, that was taken away from us and what, what we're trying to, you know, get back, the land rights and things like that. How did this particular project come about? Well, um, it was an inspiration from seeing the band in Australia in 1983, because I was established here in England for two and a half years. I went back to Australia, and um, it was the first time I'd ever seen an Aboriginal band. And it was just, you know, really inspiring. And we went, talked to the band from the very beginning, talked to No Fix Address from the very beginning about the project, the idea being to bring them to this country, get an international recognition for their work. And we believe that with no fixed address coming over here, the Aboriginal land rights struggle, and plus a greater understanding of Aboriginal issues, will eventuate in this country, as it always has done in the UK. 
As you know, we had the Great Fire of London in 1666, which demolished 30,000 houses and 69 churches. And Sir Christopher Wren was commissioned to rebuild the city. And of course, in the city of London, the streets were very narrow at the time. All the houses were made of wood. And in places, the houses were so close together, you could go to your bedroom window and you could shake hands with your opposite neighbor. And that's the reason we lost a lot of houses. Uh, the year previous, 1665, we had our last and final plague. And of course, the following year with the fire, it would completely wipe the plague out. It's a gardening crisis. It's a stereo pen. And the other thing is, you're going to use a stereo, a stereo pen with pants in between one speaker and the other. This one called For Me Cause.
watching now. Ancient man am I. Pure, clean air have I kept for eons of time. The seasons are our friends. The wind, the sounds, the sands, the trees, the animals, the insects are all part of me as I am a part of my people. Long distances I trek to visit the burial ground where each grain of sand is one of the spirits returned to guide our steps as we walk about the outback of a favored land. Dream time is another link with ancestors in further distant places where the journeys are longer and harder to achieve. The people who we allow to share our land and welcome like brothers have committed terrible acts of genocide on us. At one time, they poisoned our streams with the contents of their skin bags. Now they do it with their silver dream racers and their chemicals. They desecrate our sacred places and pollute everything they touch. Our children are dying from malnutrition and still contracting many evil diseases as a result of tests made years ago. Our land is radioactive for 5,000 years. They tell us it is safe to use it and we should return. They continue to expel us from our hunting and ancestral lands so that mining of the material called uranium, which they use for mass destruction, can continue. In other areas, they extract from our precious soil gold, diamonds, bauxite, and other minerals. Cattle ranchers are use hundreds of thousands of acres of our land on which we are not allowed except as hired hands. They talk of justice, democracy, and civilization, but deny us basic freedoms. In Queensland, named after the Queen called Victoria, we have been disfranchised. It surprises few of us. Not many people realize that the Queensland Aboriginal Act was the instrument used for the framing of the South African apartheid laws. And that here, it is legal to pay us under the agreed minimum wage. In the rat holes of the cities, a proud people are made to subsist on welfare handouts, grudgingly given and received. They want to wipe out our friends, the kangaroo, just like they did to our people on the island called Tasmania. When will they realize that the spirits who guard our land will not consent to complete extermination? They will learn that ours is a temporary bondage. about the things that were said and I relate very strongly to, to what they were doing and I felt that the poem was just something that just released all that emotion that I feel about Australia and what's happening in Australia with Aboriginal people. Because uh, being Aboriginal myself I just feel so strongly about how do you think the message is going to go here in Britain? The message the band has, land rights. I think Britain's uh, most aware people in Britain are really ready to listen to what they've got to say because there has there have actually been a lot of Aboriginal people over here protesting in the last two to two to three months and protesting about what's happened, what happened at Maralinga. There was Yami Lester and his wife here. There were people like Barbara Flick 
and Joan Winfield protesting at the annual general meeting of Rio Tinto Zinc and just making a presence and awareness felt about what's happening and what should be happening in Australia in regards to land rights. So I think the people in Britain here are, have, have got open ears and they're just ready and I think it's going to make a very big impact what they're doing and I feel that it's something very, very important for the Aboriginal people as a whole that they've come here. It's very, very important. Well, I didn't realise all this because I don't think we were really aware of it here because we're aware of apartheid and everything, but we're not really aware of what's happening over there. And I didn't realise until I heard the music what was going on there. I did know a bit about it. Yeah, I mean, they have a perfectly valid case. And if that's the political angle, then you got it. They've got a very valid case. Um, I think we've done a all right job, you know. I, I think they appreciate it more here them back there because um, reg reggae is not that big in Australia. But yeah, I, I, you know, we play different kind of reggae rock, you know. Um, I mean, different kind of reggae. More rock and more country western, more hard hitting. And uh, they accepted it and uh, more better. What about the message? Oh, they, 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 they were listening, you know? They were listening. And um, then they kind of relaxed into it and went for it, you know. And a lot of people out there got very emotional, very emotional. Um, oh, see, when we, when we sing this song, like, we close our eyes and we think what we sing about, but we see it, well, I see it when my eyes are closed. So it just comes out, you know, like what I see in my mind, what I feel. Um, pe people got to know what's really going on. You know, like. One of the things that the people here tonight thought was really interesting was the didgeridoo playing. Yeah, well, tonight was the first time for the two years I've been with the band when Bart's ever done a duo. And, like, I know I thought that went down really well. Like, the people just went, you know... <laughs> They didn't know how to take it. They just shook their soul. Regardless of your politics, I think the best music you played tonight was the one with the didgeridoo. Yeah. So I'm very much a believer that you can play blues music until your heart blows out, but until you have a gimmick, you won't be a success. And that didgeridoo for me was... I mean, I'm from England and I've never heard anything like it and I thought that was a success. And I thought that would sell that kind of music and the poem as well. Yeah, well, that's a guy who's um, over here. Yeah, um, what was his name? Um, it's City something, isn't it? But that was your poem, wasn't yeah. it? No, no, he wrote that. Did he? Because he experienced that over in Australia. Did he go there? Yeah, I he thought was very oh, I thought that was your writing. I thought he wrote he thought, it off. You know, he felt the spirit in me. Yeah. He knew that. What he said was yeah. true, you know? Mm, I, I know, I, I heard it.
the band now two and a half years. What sort of problems have you encountered? Well, I've lost a few friends because I work for the band and that. Um, Why is that? They don't like the idea of me hanging around with black people, basically, back home in Sydney. Um, I find I've changed a lot. I've got a different type of education out of it to what I learned at school. Um, I've learned a different way of life. I've learned to appreciate things a lot more. That, um, I suppose you could say I've learned the hard side of life. Has the band actually encountered any problems whilst here in Britain? A few people I admit have taken insult, have come up to me and taken insult to the band's politics. But, um, in what way? Well, they don't like the way the band says um, the white man did this and the white man did that when Cook first came to Australia. Um, but after a while, like they've got, the same people have come up to me after seeing the band twice or something and have said how they've actually understood basically what it's about now that they've learned a bit more about it. People over here, uh, you can't call people over here ignorant because we've learned that they've been... They haven't been told the truth about what really goes on in Australia, such as the press just doesn't tell the truth. They only tell the good things about Australia, not the hard times. So how is the band's politics actually going down in the main, I mean, in general? In general, most people are accepting the politics and um, understanding them and realising them what they're about. You'll come across a few people that'll just be basically which then you could might be able to cause some people ignorant or just um yeah racist people that don't want to accept the truth and that as far as they're concerned that's not the way it's going to be they, they won't accept the truth to the what it's all about that, but but most people are actually accepting it we haven't really encountered any hassles is that something that you've learnt over the last couple of years with the band? I mean, have you actually learnt what it is to be like on the other side of the road? So it... I've... I, the reason, I was only meant to work for the band for two days, um, originally, in Perth. And I st I've stayed with them this long because when I went to school, I had harassment, like, because I had, was, had white skin but an Italian father. Um, I was always called well and I knew what it was like to actually be harassed just because of my background or my cultural background, my parents' background. Um, I can sense things in that way, but um, yeah, I've learned a few things about it. I've learned a lot of different things, but I've also, um, I can relate in some ways to the politics of the music. And that, I suppose that's what it boils down to, why I've stayed with them for so long. Swan Lake, beginning any minute now, just down there in front of the red tent. Right, show me your back. Where is one? Ah, I see the swan. Which one? Not which one, the swan. You put the swan, you know. The swan, do you not know a swan when you see it? Well, where? Uh, but you would not believe what I am seeing with my little pinky little eyes. What? What's happening? This swan. She is transmutatorating into a beautiful princess. <gasps> white manager for a political black band, a bit incongruous. Uh, yeah, for, but no, because um, it's what I'm into, it's what I believe in. You know, guys like me, so therefore I fit. 
How political is the band? Um, sort of in international politics, etc. Uh, sort of looking at it as party politics, not political at all, right? But from people's point of view, like people politics, incredibly so. They're, in my opinion, saying more than any other band does say. I mean, there are other Australian bands such as Midnight Oil, Red Gum, but um, none of them have quite the depth or the conviction that No Fixed Address has because none of them are directly affected as much as, say, No Fixed Address is. When you say directly affected, would you like to elaborate? Yeah, well, for instance, um, with a band such as uh, Midnight Oil, they talk about nuclear power, etc., and, and the dangers of it, right? But it's not a direct threat on them at that time. With no fixed address, it's an everyday threat, what they're coming up against and what they're fighting against. I am a black, black man, and I need to be recognised in this wretched world, for we are getting brainwashed, and the people forgetting about our rights, so oh, you people, you got to... Do 
What does Bart say into the didgeridoo? He often talks into the didgeridoo. Sometimes it's very hard to hear exactly what he says. But what does he say? He says, what do you want? Blame lights. When you want them. So now, what do you got? Two things, they ain't got nothing. Just got like what you got here a big nothing country. <laughs> a lot of buildings and, and a lot of lost culture. That's what we don't want. Means um, giving, uh, oh, so giving back our, our land to our people and uh, give them back their pride, you know, culture, keep our culture, and uh, unity. Mine is about um, just getting, getting our land back, like that. How important is that to you? Really important. much kind of friction between blacks and whites here as there is in Australia? No, not not that I've found anyway. Like they mix. I suppose I've only been to the places where they do get along, not to the real posh place. I was interested that some West Indian people immediately accepted no fixed addresses as brothers, as you know, brethren from across the water and the idea of one struggle for black people around the world. Is there a political message behind black music here in London? A political message? Well, that's very difficult to answer because the way I see black music, at least reggae music, is that it expresses a particular way of life which is, by its very nature, 
opposed to the system that we all take for granted, we all live in. So in that sense, because it is an opposition force, it is political. But I don't think that musicians themselves will call themselves politicians or whatever. They're just people who are speaking a truth, a truth that they see being related to the way they live life. And unfortunately, that truth is presented in a way which sort of plays a negative, um, puts a negative aura around the system that we accept. So um, in that sense, yes, it is political. But I don't know if that is what the people themselves would actually, they would take that umbrella, where they would take that label, you know, because as I say, they're not, they're not in it to be politicians. They're just playing music and they're talking about the things they do, they feel. And it's just by circumstances that it happens to have a political element. A lot of the youth, they really haven't got any chance to work, so therefore they turn to music. And it, I don't know, it kind of like, it's mushrooming because black music now, you're getting a, a wider variety. You're getting the youth into African, you're getting the youth into reggae, you're getting them into calypso, into soca, into soul, and they're even going into rock. Yeah, so it's like the black music, it's, it's really mushrooming right now. At the same time, there's also a growing, uh, growing concept of returning to the roots of black music. So in other words, taking away the how can I say, the fanciness, the prettiness of the music and dealing more with the feeling, dealing more with the content rather than the, uh, the rapping, if you see what I mean, yeah? It's like one is pop and one is the roots, yeah? And people are readily picking up on the pop because it's more acceptable, yeah? It comes like a form of music which they already know. But maybe the time will come when the roots itself will be accepted as well. BJ, you saw No Fix the Dress. What did you think of the band? I think the band was very good. Very good. I've, I've heard of them and I've heard uh, some of their records uh, from Australia and I think uh, they're very impressive. Um, they especially have a very different sound to, uh, to a lot of black bands here. And uh, different in the sense that uh, they are uh, mixing a number of of types of music. There's uh, the Aboriginal content, which is probably the most important, which gives it a completely different flavor to, to a lot of the music that you hear, uh, hear which is uh, of African or Afro-Caribbean uh, you know, uh, origin. So uh, that is very different. Plus you have uh, uh, the reggae and the rock content. What about the political content of their lyrics? I think that is that is uh, the other important aspect, obviously, and that is uh, 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 putting uh, the point over of where black people from Australia or Aboriginal uh, people from Australia stand in terms of the questions of uh, land rights, racism in Australia, and confronting those issues because uh, I think the band has uh, brings over that message very clearly, and that is uh, uh, questions like land rights, like racism, have to be tackled. And people outside of Australia have to know what's happening in Australia. And this is something I think that the band does bring over to people outside here, which I think is part of the reason for people responding, you know. And uh, the other thing, there are not many, in fact, uh, they're probably the first black uh, band from Australia that's touring anywhere overseas, I'm quite sure. And uh, this is uh, something new. Sometimes people get offended by, by the words of the songs and you know, get really angry about the fact that you're putting the white man down. I mean, how do you feel when that happens? Well, people like that are just ignorant if they don't want to listen to the lyrics and just know about the truth. It's just ignorance. How do I feel? It all depends how they say it. You know? If they didn't like the song because of, you know, the song was set out, then, you know, what we do. No, I'm talking about the words, more the words. I mean, if they're offended by the words. <laughs> well, that says, you know, um, stupidity for not, you know, trying to understand what it's all about. You know, try to understand you know, what they're all about before you criticize somebody. Miles away. Miles away. 
Is there a lot of uh, racialism, racialism in Australia towards the Aborigine? Ah, yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, but you get used to it, you know. You don't, you don't hold no grudges. You just, you just uh, try to figure a way to, to avoid it. Yeah. In what, in what way is, uh, like, in what way do they show their sort of, uh, you know, their racialist feelings then? Well, I guess. Um, I guess you gotta find that out. Um, like well, they might like, try to make fun of you, isn't it? I mean, like, they don't yeah. sort of I'm like, if you... point fingers and all that. Nah, no, it's different to that. Um, they won't let us in pubs or. No? We just, we just, uh, we've got our independence. Is it the same, is it the same situation as, they, uh, as they've got in South Africa then? You know, towards the. the... Yeah. Yeah? Really? Maybe even worse. But That's terrible. But Are there any of the songs that you've written that actually relate to any particular incident? Like, is there something that might have sparked off one of those songs? Yeah, well... Pigs are, you know, you heard pigs, eh? That's really from, uh, like, Adelaide pigs, they're really bad over there. Like, the night before I was walking down Ironley Street, you know, there's just cops everywhere, they're just telling everybody to, you know, piss off off the street. Wasn't allowed to go into this pub. And they just said, oh, we're cleaning up Pineley Street, you know, we're gonna, if you don't piss off, we're gonna lock you up. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not right doing that. How much harassment is there? I mean, how much harassment is there today in Australia? Oh, there's still a lot going on, like, the police force of over there. Yeah, really stupid, the way their attitude towards Aboriginals. strange place to find a federal government minister. Yeah, I suppose it is on one view of it. Why are you here? I'm here to barrack for an Aboriginal band that's performing in London. How important do you think it is for an Aboriginal band to be playing here? I think that it's important for them, obviously, because 
um, they've had a good track record in Australia, and I think there are things that they're saying in terms of their music and about what Aboriginal people are about, which uh, it's important not only for Australians to hear, but other people around the world to hear. Very political. I mean, the band is very political as far as land rights go and as far as the plight of the Aboriginals go. How do you think they will be received here in Britain? That's a matter for the for the British people. Britain, British people are fairly tolerant. Uh, uh, I think they can live with all of that. I don't think there's anything that uh, the band's going to do or say which is going to freak the British people out. Uh, it might freak out a few Australians, but uh, essentially, um, where Australians are operating internationally, whether it's in yacht races, in tennis, Olympic games, in the field of arts, then I think we've got to be backing them up. If what they're saying is relevant to um, the world, then I think that's good.